Good morning, everybody. I want to give some feedback on yesterday's learning. I think we got a little bit confused between equivalent fractions and comparing and ordering fractions. The reason that we learn equivalent fractions first is so that when we come to comparing them, we have the skills to find an equivalent fraction so that two things can be compared because they're the same. So I want us to look at our learning again from yesterday because I'm not confident that everybody that has sent in their work was confident and got everything right. So I want to have another look at it. We've got two fractions here. We've got a half and a quarter. I know from my own knowledge of fractions that a quarter is smaller than a half because the denominator, the bottom number, the one you sit on, is bigger than the two. So before it's bigger than two. What that means is pictorially, if you consider this, the pink section here is a half, and this is what we call fractions wall. Shows you the size of different fractions. A half comes to this line here. A quarter is this line here. So one quarter is this size and a half is this size. So already I know that that one's bigger. But we can't always rely on the fraction being so comparable, so easy to understand. So what we need to do for this simple fraction is to make them comparable, is to make them both the same, have the same denominator so we can compare them. In order to do that, we need to find an equivalent fraction for the one that's different. So what that means is I need to understand the relationship between the two denominators, two and four. Just like we've been doing previously, what's the relationship between two and four? Exactly. Two times two is four. And what you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So let's look at what that means in principle. If I times that by two, I'm going to get an equivalent fraction down here. So this fraction will be the same as this fraction up here. And already, because you're all super clever, I can hear you screaming that one half, one times two is two, two times two is four, is two quarters. Two is half of four. So if we compare two quarters to one quarter, we can immediately compare them just by using the numerator. We've found a common denominator, both fours. We can now simply compare the numerators. Two is bigger than one, so therefore, that fraction is bigger. Two quarters is bigger than one quarter. But the question didn't ask if two quarters is bigger than one quarter. It asked to compare a half and a quarter. So I need to come back to my original answer. Remember the greater than sign. Greater than, a little trick is, it looks a bit like a crocodile's mouth and the crocodile eats the bigger number or in this case, the bigger fraction. We can't always rely on our fractions being so comparable and so easy to look at from the off. And question two yesterday, was answered differently by different people. I'm not confident that everybody was secure in their learning. And just like in school, if we're not secure, we can't move on. So I want to look at a different fraction. I want to look at four ninths and I want to look at one third. This was a question from question two yesterday. Four ninths and one third, sorry, a bit of technical difficulties there. At the moment, I could just say to myself, you know what, four ninths is bigger because four is bigger than one, nine's a bigger number. Oh, but remember, if the denominator, the bottom number, is larger, the fraction size, the individual fraction size is actually smaller. So it's hard to compare these two. So this one that's different over here, I need to make it, that's right, an equivalent fraction. I need to find the same fraction that's a third, but make it over a nine, all right? Just like we've been doing. So. Lots of us yesterday found an equivalent fraction, but we didn't finish it off by comparing the two original fractions. So the one that's different, we need to find an equivalent fraction for that. So I've got one third and four ninths. You must be sick of me saying this. What's the first step? What's the relationship between three and nine? That's right. Three times three is nine. So the denominator becomes nine. And what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. What is one times three? Three ninths. Right. They're the same. Let's bring that other fraction down. I've got four ninths, three ninths. Because the denominator are now both the same, it's easy to compare them. The numerator is four and the numerator is three. And just like we do with regular numbers, we can recognize now that the numerator four is bigger than the three. So we can go back to our original fraction and four ninths is bigger than one third. 
But if I'd have just guessed it up here, there's a chance I could have got it wrong because these two fractions are different. Remember, we find an equivalent fraction first. So three ninths is the same as one third. They are equivalent. And that's why we learned that previously. We can then compare them because they're both over nine. They have a common denominator. And because they have a common denominator, we can just look at the top numbers, the numerators. Four is greater than three. So our greater than sign goes this way. I want us to have another go at question two today, please. If you feel like you were a person that got every single thing right yesterday, can you please get in touch? Because I didn't see that um, on the feedback that you sent in. So before we move on, let's make sure we're securing this learning. Good luck, guys, and get in touch if you need anything.